Welcome to the Pinch to Zoom podcast, the show where we zoom in on the latest tech news, products, and trends. I'm Stetson. I'm Gabe. And in this episode, we're doing a special bonus episode covering Samsung's Unpacked Event 2020, where they announced the Galaxy Note 20, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, and the Galaxy Z Fold 2. We'll also touch on Google's Pixel 4a. I think it's going to be a pretty exciting, jam-packed, cell phone filled episode we should just get right into it gabe what do you think i think that we have to slow down with these bonus episodes we're getting a little out of hand our editor has been complaining uh <laughs> saying that you know you know maybe you should tell stetson that we shouldn't do these bonus episodes we should just give him a bonus we'll but give then, him a bonus we'll also, move right by also it also our producer has been saying we need to do more of these uh bonus episodes the problem is i think our producer and our editor are both me so we're at a bit of a little <laughs> odds here. Tell them, tell them to speak with HR. Get that sorted out. Okay, I will. The gosh, now I'm uh, having yeah, schizophrenia. We we had such a, a big week, a huge month. We had cameras. Now we have smartphones. I mean, and we we're not even in thick of it, right? Because Apple's coming out in September. We've got already huge products. July, August, September. Yeah, I heard it's... rumors of a Canon Cinema camera with RF glass coming out in the end of august or beginning of september for like 4500 possibly Woo. Yeah. yeah so it's a big month uh this episode we're focusing on cell phones gabe i think you had a really great tweet that i want to share with the audience if that's all right you said or do you want to read it in your voice get that like audio fo- gabe you had a great tweet that read tech world better brace itself for some whiplash going from monday's quiet release of the 349 google pixel 4a to today's samsung unpacked note 20 launch that yeah. was such a great event well you kind I of mean... you kind of beat me to the punchline which, which, which i was actually going to say something different and kind of similar but you beat me to the punchline with my own tweet of i think we should title this podcast episode kind of like tale of two smartphones or something like that right i we could even just title it tech whiplash 349 pixel 4a and galaxy s20 well, $999. Yeah, it's it's not only that, it's the way they launched the phones where Google just kind of just quietly emailed out, you know, oh, here's our phone. Uh, it's up on our website now. If you want to order it, you can order it. And then Samsung did this huge, you know, keynote style thing with introducing Mystic oh my Bronze. God. Yeah, wait, did they announce anything else at the keynote? Or is it? No, it was just, it was just Mystic, Mystic Bronze. Bronze and... Um, I don't know. The whole keynote in general is very mystical, I thought. It was a mystical key. It was weird. Oh. It was so weird. We'll get to that in a yeah. bit. I first want to touch on Pixel 4a. Google was actually kind enough to send one out to me. I'm part of Team Pixel, uh, so I get to share early content on it, which is super exciting. Okay, but before you get too far doing sponsored content, just know that we have to keep this part on the Pixel 4a appropriately like size compared to the Samsung, as in it has to be very small compared to how big Samsung's event was. This is Pixel 4a. It's Google's $349 phone. It's got a plastic back, an excellent camera. Comes with the Snapdragon 730G, 128 gigs of storage, is running Android 10, and it has a headphone jack. Uh, It's available for pre-order now, available on August 20th in the United States, and in the rest of the world, there are a few delays there. But yeah, it's a small phone that honestly is a great experience at a very affordable price point. Competing, I think, primarily with Apple's iPhone SE, um, but that's that's basically it. It's affordable. Okay. It runs. It runs Android. It's great. Are we also, I love it. Are you also going to mention that it's like soon to be outdated, kind of by the? Yeah. Yikes. Four, Google four A five G. They teased it. Yeah, Gabe. What did they tease? They announced this, and then they were like, "Oh yeah, by the way, coming soon." Yeah, coming soon. The Pixel Five and the Pixel Four A five G. I think they ran into the issue of the Google, or the Google Pixel 4a was originally supposed to launch back in the spring, right? Yeah, so I think it was supposed to be a spring release. That's what we saw last year with the Pixel 3a. Yeah. And I think due to COVID-19, all the delays ended up pushing this release back. And then with iPhone, with Apple's iPhone SE, I think Google wanted to try and undercut them. So they just waited for the parts to drop in price and then they could purchase them in volume. And that's why we have it now. It's still a great phone, but it may potentially be short-lived yeah and that's going to be short talked about too because we're moving on to the big thing everyone wants to know about samsung unpacked 2020 august i guess they call everything unpacked so this is august 2020 unpacked and there was five 
big products that were debuted at this, uh, or not debuted, released, announced, whatever you want to call it, at this event. That was the Galaxy, Galaxy Note 20 and Note 20 Ultra. You had the Galaxy Buds Live. You had the Galaxy Watch 3. You had the Galaxy S7 and S7 Plus tablet. And the Galaxy Z Fold 2. Yeah, huge, a lot. huge lineup from but, Samsung. But let's start right at the top with the big one that was the headliner, really, I think. The Galaxy Note 20 and Note 20 Ultra. This is Samsung's most premium, largest smartphone built-in S Pen. Well, is it? Is it, though? It's not. Okay, it's actually, it should be. It should be the it most should premium. Be. I like that. I think uh, Samsung needs to do a little bit of Go back to the drawing board, here. yeah. <laughs> they uh, lost their identity of what the Note lineup means. I mean... Yeah, Gabe, do you want to pick one of these devices and go with it, and I'll just take the other one? Well, let's start with the cheaper one, the Note 20, which oh. really is, I know, it's a bit of a disappointment. It's a $999 disappointment. That's Exactly right. I mean, it's not a bad phone, but for the price, it leaves you wanting a bit more potentially. So with the Note 20, you're getting basically, I think it's the same specs essentially as the Galaxy S20, right? Well, pretty, it's very similar. Pretty much. But so similar it's, that... Uh, it's missing a few key things. So even the yeah. S20 has the 120 hertz refresh rate display. With the Note 20, Samsung dropped it back to a 60 hertz display. Not only that, Samsung swapped out the nice premium glass back for a plastic back. But they bragged about that. That was... That was the thing. They said, oh, we were able to put the same color in despite giving you a cheaper back on this phone. It's kind of insane. I mean, I guess the thing I would argue that you are getting with the S or Note 20 is you're getting the S Pen, right? I guess, I mean, at this point, I would almost go with like the Note 10, last year's model. Well, I, I mean, think... what I would do now at this point is I would just go for the regular S20 because I'm pretty sure that's dropped a good amount in price by now. Oh, it definitely has. So. And... I guess they really, I think really, let's be honest, the Note 20 exists so that the Note 20 Ultra can be $300 more. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Because they're, yeah, the, the difference is, okay, let's just break down the differences here. So sure, it's yeah. main camera, you're going with a 64 megapixel on the Note 20 versus the Ultra has 108 megapixel. As you mentioned, the Note 20 Ultra also has that 120 hertz refresh rate. It has a 12 gigabyte uh, processor and it also no, 12, has 12 gigs of ram yeah 12 sorry 12 gigabytes of ram on the processor and then uh on the screen wise you have a larger screen which is also an edge to edge type display that curves around which you know feel either way about it i kind of do like it i i don't like it it okay. looks gorgeous in marketing and in all the b-roll shots on Not youtube practical. which is why no. i think people enjoy it I get so many accidental touches and the edges, I don't know if you've used a phone with a curved display, but the edges are actually brighter and of discoloration. And yeah, in I have kind of opinion, seen that. It's distracting. Like, it's not something I want to use. I strongly prefer the flat display. That's hmm. the only thing I like about the Note 20 is that flat display. But yeah, as you mentioned, the Note 20 Ultra is packing better specs in every department. It has a better camera system uh, and... I think, yeah, it's basically the better phone, but it starts at $1,300. So that, that's a lot of money for sure. Uh, you, it's you expensive. Know, it's hard to really, I, I guess smartphones are just going to be that expensive now. The interesting thing is I was seeing a lot of people, you know, say, oh, you know, Samsung just got passed by Huawei. And Huawei's big thing is they're very affordable phones for, you know, the price. You're getting a lot of specs. Samsung then comes along and drops these phones, which are, you know, they're flagship models, true, so they're going to be expensive, but they're super expensive, and yeah, they, I don't know, it's, it's a very different strategy these two brands have. Samsung, granted, does have their A-line of smartphones, right, that are amazing, the specs they back into those, but it's also just interesting contrasting that for the extra price, you're not really getting that much more. The thing that you are basically getting, I would argue, and we saw them advertise a ton, is the color, right? That's the big thing. Oh, I was like, actually they, just thinking about They've turned from going to specs to, oh, look, this year you can get an exclusive color, Mystic Bronze. Ooh, that's, that's worth what you want. $300 that's what people are more. Paying for. Yeah. It's that 
status symbol, that clout. It really is. It really is. The Mystic Bronze. People know. The Android people know. I think they also showed out, uh, showed off some really cool features with Samsung DeX. That's now wireless. And you can also now use, they partnered very closely with Microsoft in this event. So you can use your Samsung Galaxy apps from the Google Play Store on your compatible Windows computer. I think you're using uh, the phone connect feature. I forget exactly what it's called, but it's exactly what Apple announced with macOS Big Sur, where it can run iOS apps natively thanks to the Apple Silicon coming later this year and next year. So I'm, I'm, I think that's I'm a- glad you brought this up, though, because I thought this was actually I'd almost forgotten about it. But it is the other big feature from this whole event was the integration with Microsoft of not only just that, but the texting being able to on all different devices, your, even other Samsung devices, you can have the text be on there. And I think the other thing was the gaming. They're integrating with the X Cloud gaming and Game Pass. So you can play games on your tablet, which I guess brings us right over to the S7 tablet, might as well go right there, which was something interesting I was thinking is like, that could be a pretty cool gaming setup to have a tablet that you can play games on. I mean, I know Stadia said they were going to bring games to iOS devices eventually, and I'm guessing xCloud will too, but it feels like that's further down the line. And for now, Android devices are quick to you know open up their platform to be accessible for Microsoft's platform. Yeah, with Microsoft's close integration with Samsung here, we saw xCloud not only demonstrated on the Galaxy devices, which you know, beautiful displays and will work great, but also on the Galaxy Tab devices, they'll work as well. And what I think is great is both the Galaxy Tab, so we saw the Galaxy Tab S7 and the Tab S7 Plus here. Both of these devices have the option to get a cellular version, which includes millimeter wave antennas and sub six 5G antennas. So you can get ultra fast data performance and low latency, which is what you need when you are gaming from the cloud. So that's kind of a unique feature. Otherwise, these tablets are basically rivaling Apple's iPad Pro, I would say, kind of taking a direct stab at that. Uh, We have the Tab S7 starting at $650, which I think is actually, like compared to the phones they just announced, this is really affordable. Uh, So Tab S7 for $650, S7 Plus for $850, keyboard accessory going for $200 on the smaller model, and 230 bucks on the bigger one. You have a seven inch display on the S7. No, sorry, then, it's not a seven inch. I was just looking this up because I saw it in the notes. It's an 11 inch actually. Ah, excuse me, I mistyped yeah. that. Uh, so you got an 11 no, inch but, but display. I think, but you bring it to the point. I think it's very confusing what they're doing here because I remember when the, there used to be a smaller, like wasn't it the Galaxy, there was a Galaxy like Tab 7 and then the Tab 10 and the set, the seven was the seven oh, inch. Oh yeah, you're right. The 10 was the 10 inch. So it's a little confusing what they're doing it does make sense because they're basically now doing like an iPad Pro and an iPad Pro Plus is essentially what Samsung's done, right? Yeah, so I think Apple just says iPad Pro and then you pick the size and yeah. Samsung is like, they added the plus. But there's, Because they there's have a, to make it confusing. That's why. There is a difference though. So the yes, there is. regular smaller S7 has a fingerprint reader in the power button and an LCD display. When you bump up to that S7 Plus, you're getting a fingerprint reader underneath the display, which could be cool on a tablet and you're getting an OLED 120 hertz display uh and you're also paying a little bit more I think I mean what did you think of these do you think these have a chance at competing with Apple are are they good tablets can you even do work with them I think I'm yeah I don't know I, I, I definitely think iPads are becoming more and more functional there was a dig in there I liked that Samsung that they said we were the ones or they said we've been doing like multi window or multi app support. Oh yeah, I remember for that. many years now or something. It was obvious they get Apple because Apple just added that with iPad OS. You know, I could see this being a lot more functional and useful with the five G, and I think that's possibly how it will be used more. It's people who want an on the go computer and are, you know, a PC person going with one of these. I think Apple's iPad Pro needs to get 5G this fall. And yeah. I will say props to Samsung with their new S Pen. We didn't even talk about, about that with the Note, but uh, they dropped the input lag down to nine milliseconds. So it really feels like you're writing pen on paper with this thing. And I think that positions the Galaxy Tab S7 and S7 Plus as excellent handwriting, handwriting note-taking devices And on top of that, Samsung introduced their own note-taking app, which very much resembles Notability, 
currently only available on Apple's ecosystem. So I think Samsung making a push into the education market could be great options for students, especially for anyone kind of learning at home right now. But that, I think I think that's basically what we got for the Tab S7, right, Gabe? Is that does that sound about right? Yeah. Do we have an availability date for that? I forget if we put that anywhere. I do not here. have an availability date for that. Uh, it looks like they will go on sale this fall, so they haven't actually announced one. That's why that was something. This event, if people, you know, usually we say watch the event. Don't watch this event. This event was oh awful event. Probably I almost wanted to talk about that. It was like the most boring scripted. Oh my god, it was just it was so bad. disengaging. It was bad. Awful. And the fact that you watched it, and A, as Stetson mentioned in many of his tweets, the fact that the embargo was lifted right or even before the start of the event, so there was reviews going up online, but the event didn't even cover like release dates and prices and stuff like that. Or maybe it actually did, but I was asleep by the end of it or it tuned out. So It was it, so bad. You, yeah. could, you could pre-order the Samsung Note 20 before Samsung had even announced it officially in the live stream. Yeah. It's they they really there's this point where it's like, why are they even doing these live stream and announcement things? My They're guess so is bad. it's just so the Verge and CNET can do super cuts of them and put them up and stuff like that. But let's move on. They had uh two other or three other things, sorry. Two kind of yep. accessories I'd call them, which is the Galaxy Buds Live, which have been deemed by the internet the Galaxy Beans because it's so true. You just look at a photo of them and that's what they look like. Basically, they look these like kidney beans. Yeah, they. I think they honestly were going for that. Maybe I don't Apparently know. Apparently, it's uh, very ergonomic. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there we go. We like it. Gabe, tell me about these. Tell me about these beans. Well, these butts <laughs> live. Oh gosh, we're gonna keep messing it up. Well, these are the competitor to uh, Apple's AirPods Pro, so. They do have noise cancellation, and they have a better battery life too than the AirPods Pro. So wow, that's great! And you know, they're really small. So they're very they're small. Basically, like the AirPods without the stem. That's how I describe them. Yeah, it's like they completely redesigned the whole thing rather than just taking the AirPods like Apple did and chopping off a little bit. They just said, "All right, let's just design these how we want to," rather than sticking with the traditional design. The uh, interesting thing is that they're cheaper. Or the good thing is that they're cheaper than Apple's AirPods Pro. They're only $170 and are going to be available on August 6th. So that's either probably today wow, or that's, tomorrow. That's tomorrow. It's very soon like, after we're putting up this podcast. You can just buy them. Yeah. That's intriguing. Eight-hour battery life with ANC off, six hours with ANC on, and or ANC is obviously uh, noise cancellation. And they have wireless charging and USB-C charging, so that's... Very good. Fast charging. Seen that. Whatever way you want to do it. And they use three microphones uh, and also a voice pickup unit, which they didn't really clarify exactly what that was, but it had to do something with like vibrations and being able to detect if it was your voice or other noise. Yeah. What I dislike a lot about Samsung's events is instead of getting into the the nitty gritty technical aspects of how they engineered something to work. They just like throw their marketing term out there and everyone on stage is like, wow, this is an amazing feature. See how great this feature is? And they just like smile. I don't know. I appreciate taking a technical dive into some of the uh, achievements these companies have made in order to produce and manufacture their products. So I'm, I'm interested to see the Buds Live reviews when those go live. I don't think I'll get them, but... They're they're an interesting fashion statement for sure. Yeah, come in three colors, of course: mystic bronze, mystic black, and mystic white. Because everything is mystical, of course. It's twenty twenty. Why not? Moving on, because I really this point. This is kind of like what I was feeling in during the event. I was like, all right, let's just get it over with. Yeah, let's get it over with. Uh, we had the Galaxy Watch three. I think my favorite part of this announcement is when the presenter did her squatting exercises while wearing denim, the denim jeans, like full really? dress. I, like I like the, the when she's like, let me just go for a run. And she just like ran off the stage, <laughs> around the stage and up the other side. And it was like, I'm done with my run. Look at these exciting Great. heart 16 rate minutes, metrics. 16 minutes, seconds, uh, 28 feet. You know, yeah, it was. I actually did kind of like that because that kind of felt more like a live event in that sense, even though it was pre-recorded. But 
otherwise, honestly, the, the smartwatch was the least exciting part of that presentation, despite how boring the overall presentation was. Yeah, it was so 14% thinner, 8% smaller, 15% lighter, has a bigger screen. It now does ECG, which is the electrocardiogram, or is it cardiograph? One of those. Uh, and you can now measure blood, blood oxygen levels, blood pressure, and you can also continue to measure your sleep as you could before. It looks like a decent smartwatch, but honestly, I do think the Android Wear ecosystem could use some additional love. I don't think the user interface is as intuitive as what Apple has done. But yeah. it's a thing now. The interesting thing is Google is trying to buy Fitbit, or they, they put out a buy offer for Fitbit like a year ago now, but it's still going through uh, regulatory scrutiny. And I really uh, think that if the you know if the EU can figure out a way for Google to acquire Fitbit and not have any issues as far as data or user I data. Think that's being, what they're concerned about. Yeah, you know, like health data being used for advertising and stuff, then I think it would really actually be a benefit to the Android Wear ecosystem. And we need, we need some more wearable love. Lineup, so yeah. at this point, despite going well, no, for our quick price, run. Let's go price-wise. Price oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so starts at 399 for the 41 millimeter, and again, this is a round watch, so not not square like Apple. Uh, we have 429 for the 45 millimeter, and they do have LTE models that are $50 extra. So very competitive with Apple's smartwatches as well. Yep, all right, so after our quick run there, I and honestly, at this point in the presentation, I was ready to fall asleep, I was distracted on Twitter, but Samsung did something genuinely exciting. Yeah, they, they rebranded their Fold, Galaxy Fold, this is true. This was a very, I don't, you noticed it, I hope too, because I did notice it. We had originally, we had the first folding screen device, the Galaxy Fold. Uh, that was obviously a disaster upon a disaster. And then we had the Galaxy Z Flip, which honestly I thought was the more exciting one. It and, was great. A vertically flipping phone, yeah, like the old flip phone, like the Razor's kind touch of. screen. Yeah, exactly. And then Samsung's crack marketing team replacement for Apple's crack marketing team was like, huh. What if we just use the Z as the branding for our flip and folding phones? And right. that, that's kind of what they did. I, I do like that. I think it's a smart move. So It you actually kind of makes sense because yeah. you have the Galaxy S, the Galaxy Note, and now you have the Galaxy Z. Yeah, the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is this new device. And also the letter Z kind of looks like it's folding, right? Yeah, Oh, it is kind of neat. Yeah. So uh, first off, let's just start preface by saying this device isn't even really announced yet. Even though they announced it fully, it's not announced because they're going to have a full event on September 1st. So wow, I didn't know they were doing a separate event. Yeah, wait, on you, this, you didn't see September. this? They said tune no, back in on it. September 1st. Yeah, you'd fallen asleep wow. obviously by then. Yeah, I was, I mean, out. I thought this was incredible. Okay, well, I think say why you we think it's talk incredible. About it. yeah. yeah, so all right, the, the Z Fold 2 they samsung took a lot of the problems with the original fold and has fixed them or attempted to fix them at least address them in the z fold 2 so a lot of the concerns were around hinge durability and so what samsung has done is they took inspiration from a vacuum cleaner and the microfiber bristles of the vacuum cleaner that were used to suck up dust and the samsung engineers it took them about 99 prototypes to get to the start of the solution and then samsung said by the 108th prototype they had the solution and it was putting these bristles in the hinge of the z fold 2 to help keep dust and debris out so the folding mechanism can have a long lifespan and continue working and not break the other big thing was this screen i'm sure you remember last year with the galaxy fold the screen it looked like it had a plastic screen protector on it some reviewers tried to peel that off and when they did, their device instantly broke. Like, screen was completely unusable, had weird discoloration in spots. Sometimes it was just completely black. So Samsung, again, went back to the drawing board, and they had what I think is honestly a technical masterpiece. They created glass. Yes, actual glass that is thinner than the human hair and can actually fold. I'm guessing this is actually taken from the Z Flip. And this really helps the build and structural integrity of this device while keeping it uh, a little bit, yeah, I guess easier to use, nicer to use, and stronger. So I think those are the two highlights for me. They obviously increase the size of the front display. 
They increased the inside display and added the Infinity O camera cutout instead of the huge obnoxious uh, camera section that was part of the the previous model. But yeah, I think those. I mean, that's it. That's those are the highlights. Better cameras, better displays, better build, okay. better materials. So that's a little me, bit of a rant, but let me tear this down a little bit. So I I think yes, okay, it all looks good. But I will just sit, harken back to when the original Fold was released, and that all looked very good, too. So I think, yeah, they can put all these new marketing terms, say they redesigned it. But I'm sorry, you can't uh, you can't design necessarily for how people are using their phones and what's going to happen in daily use. I think it's great that they're doing this glass screen, right? That was one of the main things when I tried out the original Fold that I was like, yeah, it's definitely felt plasticky. Reminded me of the original you know, like Galaxy S3 and S2 phones way back when, where we got those premium Gorilla Glass displays. So I think it's great that we're actually getting a real glass display, but I still, you know, just have questions about that durability and also what it's going to look like after you've folded it 100,000 times, I don't know, 50,000 times. Because one key thing with the marketing is that you notice that there's never anything in the middle of the screen on the fold. It's always like they have this like black space down the middle. Uh, even when they were handling the phone and showing it around, there was never anything in the middle because what is that actually going to look like? You know, how good is that quality of the screen in the middle uh, initially and as you go on using the phone? That's my real yeah, question. Yeah, the, the creased area of folding phones to me resembles the curved sides of yeah. the phones we have now yeah. where there's discoloration, it doesn't look as good. and is also, bit... also, let's just mention the fact that None of the cameras are over 12 megapixels on this device. Hey, like as we six, saw with the A7S III, that doesn't necessarily like mean anything bad. It has like six cameras. I know, I know, I know it doesn't. But it just looks bad, no pun intended, that you have like six cameras, yes, but all of them are significantly less than the cameras on most of your other smartphones. Gabe, I don't think that matters because the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is available, you guessed it, in Mystic Bronze. So okay. get excited for that. I've pre-order five of them now i think the other thing i quickly want to mention here is is bts includes... did the worst unboxing ever <laughs> yeah okay so besides that it now includes a locking hinge mechanism which we saw on the z flip and this hinge mechanism lets you adjust the tilt of the fold at uh kind of i think pretty much any angle you want like there's enough resistance that you can kind of prop it up so if you're doing some kind of video call or I don't, you know, I actually don't know any of the use cases for that, but it seems like so. <laughs> they just got you on the marketing and the, see, this is where they went yeah, deep we on can the do technology. It. We can do this thing. And, and I'm like, like, yes. Uh, okay. It seems cool. But I like I think, it. I think this basically brings us to the point of, well, one, how we don't know the price of this phone. So that's going to be a big thing. Yes. But two, I'm seeing over 2000, yeah. 2200, like, oh my God. Okay. But two. Uh, is also that this remains a phone for the tech enthused and not really for anyone else who wants something useful, potentially. Yes, this is true. There might be use cases out there, but they haven't really demonstrated it to the public in a way that, you know, is really, you know, a good selling point and convinces a lot of people. They, they convinced think... Stetson with that hinge and how it's designed and the, you know, the 108th time. The new sweeper, yeah. the locking hinge mechanism, 5G, I'm sold. Sign me up. Let me right. get this thing. Exactly. But for the general public, you know, for the parents, for the older generation, for even the younger generation, it's just a really super expensive phone out there that is probably not worth it. And, and maybe, all right, five years from now, they'll get a folding phone. I think Samsung knows their audience. They know this phone is for the tech enthused. They know that those people will be wa willing to pay the ridiculous price because that's what it is. It's the bleeding edge. They'll buy it. And to some degree, like they're making this for them. And that's that's okay. And that's cool. And I respect what Samsung is doing. I still do not, I genuinely do not understand the use case for this product. I think it's way better to get a phone and a laptop. I don't understand the pricing. I just, it bamboozles me. But it's let's, still really cool. Let's bookend this episode. You started it with one of my tweets. I'll end it with one of your tweets. Uh, I'm not going to read it word for word, and you don't even have to read it because it was a question. You actually put out a poll asking people when they thought Apple would release a folding screen device. And I think this is very interesting. We were talking about there's no real use case for this. Apple has shown time and time again 
that they'll gladly sit back and wait and let Android smartphone makers try brand new features that are gimmicky, that are cutting edge, and then they'll eventually, you know, take their sweet time and be five years later rolling it out and people being like, oh my God, this is incredible. I have to get it. They've shown it with literally everything from like multitasking in the windows uh, to, I mean, can you think of any more like portrait mode? That was a game changer. Wireless charging when they finally have done it now. Game changer. Widgets. Widget. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, like something as simple and fundamental as widgets, which Android has had for years. Apple's now doing it, and they're doing it in a way that will work well for their ecosystem and for their users. And yeah, I think this this is kind of a good point. Like when Apple's ready, I think they will introduce a folding device that makes sense. And or, maybe we but maybe maybe never though. If it doesn't ever make sense and they can't yeah, think of a reason why people need it, they won't introduce it. I just remembered this. Last year, Microsoft announced oh, yeah. their Neo phone, and we should be seeing that sometime, hopefully, soon this fall, and maybe we can get well, a better what, understanding. What was the other one? The, the Duo got pushed back, right? That yeah. That was the tablet folding one. The Neo we I should think. hopefully see. Yeah, the, so the, the Duo got pushed back to next year, but the Neo we should still hopefully see this year unless it's already gotten pushed back as well. But yeah, that was that was pretty much it with the Samsung Unpack event. Overall, I would rate this pretty low. Uh, oh if my I had god! To, if I had to rate it out of twenty, I would give it six cans of beans. <laughs> That's an appropriate rating. I think I concur. Okay. Next time, I will wait for it to be available after and watch it on like three x speed or two x. It was just, oh my god. Well, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in to our special bonus podcast episode covering Samsung Unpacked, as well as Pixel 4a. I don't know if you you remember that guy, but that's only 350 bucks. So you can get like four or five of those for the price of everything Tape them all together, and there you have three cameras right there on the back. Boom! There you go. And And a bigger screen. And you can fold Uh, them. Share this episode or podcast with a friend if you enjoyed it. Leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts. We really appreciate it. It helps support the show. Find us on Twitter at Pinch to Zoom Pod, Instagram at Pinch to Zoom Podcast. I'm Stetson. I'm Gabe20. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Take care. Do you think I'm thinking of a color? Phones, I'm thinking of a color. Do you think folding phones will. Mystic Bronze, that's my answer. <laughs> what? What? You got a question? Do you think. Do you think folding phones will replace uh-huh. books? Mystic Bronze. That's that's it. Mystic Bronze is the answer to everything.